Hello, thanks very much for t talking to us. Um, just wanted to find out first of all about how Viva actually came about, how you actually came up with the idea and started work on your first feature film. Um, well, I was looking to do a movie um, about female sexual desire, and I sort of was inspired by Belle de Jour. Mm. And then um, I couldn't get the script right, and then I started looking at the old Playboys in yes. the early 70s, and then I got completely inspired, and I just wrote a script based on the ads and cartoons that I would tear out from there. Um, so that's, that's quite interesting, because you're coming from it from a slightly different angle. Instead of trying to make a film, you're almost influenced by the actual culture itself, and also with a different aim of, of trying to explore female sexuality. I mean, uh, that's true. Usually yeah. films of mine, they, they come from a theme, like, yes. or, or like a yeah. political idea, yeah. plus a visual um, setting. Mm. Yeah. And, and was it a big jump? Because you'd made short films initially, um, which were very stylish, and then to go into actually make an ambitious sort of two-hour feature film with a big cast, uh, with big production, uh, how, how was that, tackling that? It was exactly the same, but, um, yeah. but, but like it just took a lot longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot harder, mm. because everything became just so much more expensive. I can imagine, yes. And um, I was shocked by that, I didn't realise. Oh really? So that came as quite a surprise. Yeah. So it just kept mounting. It kept having the, yeah, get more money and stuff. And, and how long was the actual production time? I mean, I mean it, it took the whole thing all together. It took like three and a half years. From so, wow, that's yeah. quite. That's mm -hmm. quite, But again, if you're doing it independently and you having to raise finances and shoot. Well, that counts. That 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 counts like it, more over a year of editing, though, you know. Oh, okay. And like yes. a, like a year of pre-production. Yeah. And sewing and everything. Well, actually, you, know, you should mention the sewing because one of the other things that initially attracted me to the film was that we'd heard that you'd been responsible for all the props and the, the outfits and the costumes. Is that true? I mean, how how much involved? Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I, I mean, almost every costume in the film went, went through my sewing machine. Really? At some point. I mean, a lot of it was stuff I collected, but I had yes. to remake it completely because it would fit wrong, or it'd be the wrong size, or mm. it'd be slightly the wrong style. Yeah. You know, and so I had to. I took a lot of vintage clothes and remade them, but I was also making a lot of dresses from period patterns that I found, and but also I would sew curtains, pillows, upholstery. So literally everything. <laughs> I did a lot of paintings for the movie. Oh, um, that I didn't know. So you an artist as well. And I did the animation. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh wow. So it really is literally every, you're in every single element of the film. Yeah. I mean, some other people do paintings too, but mm. I but I did like half the painting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and. Had you already intended to be the lead in the film? Because as well as doing all that, there's quite a lot to take on to actually being the lead. So was, I was, was that... kind of insecure about being the lead, but mm. on the other hand, I'd been the lead in most of my other films, yes. and so it was a little bit like um, performance art. I was, okay. I was even a little bit more nervous about casting someone for the lead because mm. of not being able to direct them to get a kind of a feeling yeah, I wanted. to get a report performance out of it. Yeah, that. kind yeah. of like, because I, I wanted it to not be like acting, acting. I wanted right. it to be, be more like performance art or like somebody mm. going through something or experiencing something. That's how yeah. it was written. Like someone sort of dragged through the sexual revolution. I was afraid okay. to get somebody who would do sort of acting. Yes. And I wanted to just have it be more... More of an experience, maybe. To yeah, more yeah. like um, you could see that the character really is going... And mm. I was going through something making yeah. the movie because I had to let go of my inhibitions. And could you talk more about that then? Because is that was that the sort of level of nudity that's in it and, and being sort of everything? Yeah, yeah. everything because um, because I was uncomfortable with even just the bareness of the clothing and, and yes, it's very and then the nudity yeah. and, and also just being in all those situations with men and it, it mm. brought me back to teenage years and things and oh, having sexual right. predators and yes. I just put myself really into the character of like what it feels like to be totally vulnerable and. Mm. But trying really hard to make social contacts and get to know people. Yeah. And yes. Yeah, because that's very much feels what sort of Barbie's doing. She's kind of trying to go out into the world and sort of find out more about herself and and the sexuality of it as well. Um, and you mentioned when you're trying to get other other actors in. I mean, was that difficult? Did you have to? Did you know all those people? Or no, I never have. I never have problems getting actors for some oh, reason because because okay. <laughs> um, I think I write parts that are fun for actors to play and then they always want to do mm. it. And, I know how to cast. I've got an eye for casting, and so yes. I, I've almost never had any. Pro I mean, actors have all been incredible. Mm. They're very skilled, and they're a lot of fun, and they bring a lot of energy to the set. 
So. Yeah, and, and you worked with um, Jared Sanford and Barry Morse again, who you'd worked in the I worked with them before, yes. they're good friends of mine, yes. but almost everybody else was through casting calls. Oh, okay. And was that just, you have a working relationship with them, or, or were they people you re specifically wanted in the No, I just, did it, I just did it for, um, like, ha like how every movie's done yes. in Hollywood. I just put out casting calls in the trade papers, and then oh, okay. you have like auditions with hundreds of people come and yeah. read for you and your videotape. I mean, just like that, you know, as <laughs> I found them that way. That must be very yeah. odd, actually, if you've, you've put so much into this, to seeing other people sort of reading it and trying to interpret it in different ways. Well, that's how it comes alive. But the yeah. thing, thing is about actors is that, is that um, there's so many really interesting people out there mm. that are actors. And they're not necessarily like soap opera actors. They're yes. just people that kind of do this and do that. And then they also act. It's like their passion. Oh, and you okay. get some real characters yeah. around <laughs> in really? Hollywood. Real that character. And so good. most of those people I found, they really are characters. Mm. But then if you're auditioning a couple hundred people, you can pick the characters out. Oh, that's you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no, <laughs> they're good. out there, you know? Yes, yeah. I hadn't thought about it like that before. But, yeah, so. you get some interesting people. Yeah, I can imagine, especially in LA, all the sort of people floating around the edges of the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you said you had a really long production time, well, you know, three and a half years. I mean, did that, was, to some extent, was that maybe actually a help? Because if you're sort of jumping into this huge project. It was a big help. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then it, it, it was easier because it felt like doing, I could ease into it, like yes. le learning learning as, a, as I went with the crew and everything. Because mm. the crew wasn't really that polished when we started. Right. And then it kind of like everyone got used to what we were doing and then the actors got better. Mm. because they, well, here we are again, we're playing our characters. They got really, kind of like when you're doing a play, right, and it has so like a year around yes, or something, yeah, the actors get really better. Get in, grow into it. Yeah, yeah. the actors oh, get, got more and more into their characters mm. as time went on, and so it was nice. Oh, that's excellent. Um, and when you're actually shooting it, the actual production of the film, um, was what did you actually shoot on? Did you shoot on film, or was it digital? 35 or? millimeter. Oh, it was 35. Yeah. And was that an attempt to sort of stay true to the actual times. Yeah, but I, also, I just love film. I always yes. shoot on film. Yeah. I, the very first thing I ever shot on was video. Uh, on, if, if possible, I'll never go back. Yes, I hated yeah. it. I thought I was, you know, I was moving up a step when I moved mm. to Super 8. That was oh, like, for me, Super that was the big step up. Because <laughs> I really like film, you know. Yes. Well, there's something quite hypnotic about it. And I always feel I haven't seen a film unless I've seen it on a print. And I know yeah. digital can look nice, but there's, even if it's an old battered print, there's something warm about watching There's something it nice way. about yeah, it and I think yeah. people look better on film yes yeah <laughs> and I think I mean did, did was also that a conscious decision to try to sort of match the times because all those films would have been all 35 millimeter and, and sh shown in cinema oh well, I always um ever since I started shooting film I've yeah. always wanted to shoot 35 millimeter oh brilliant yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um and actually trying to talk about the actual film itself well I mean what I found was it was um the characters were very you know, I was surprised to see that much level of sex on the screen here. I mean, in, in a good way, and, and the sexuality of the characters. I mean, is that was that what you were trying to sort of get to? And I was trying to make mm. it kind of like the Playboys that I was looking yes. at, and like those yeah. some of those sex movies. And mm. it really actually isn't as extreme as a lot of oh, the no. stuff I was looking at. No, but no, I was trying not. to give it a quality mm. of, of of that stuff, where like it was a whole world. Um, that just consisted of sex. Yes. Al along, you know, every single walk mm. of life. You know? Especially those, like you're saying, the Playboy sort of era. It, it was much more, that was part of li your lifestyle, <clears> really. Not yeah, so I think, much, that, yeah, yeah. And, and especially like in the US and the UK, mm. it was just like all the silly sex comedies. Yes. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, we yeah, had yeah. like Love American Stuff, oh, and yes, you yeah, had yeah. Carry On, and, yes, and yeah, Confessions yeah. of a Window Washer. We yeah. all had, you know, that culture. Mm. And in a way, it was kind of silly and, and, and but it was kind of fun in a way. Mm. Oh, it was, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and we, we've like, gotten more uptight now. I well, think. that's what I was, that's the next thing I was going to say. Was like, it's almost gone to some extent. Certainly, that kind of sexuality level. I mean, yeah, it's still almost sex. But yeah, it's, it's almost like it's you're not supposed to express it directly. Yes. And that actually, you know, yeah. to me, that makes it like the repression of it makes it mm. more dirty or something. And yes. it makes it sort yeah. of like it's not out in the. Yes, it, open. it's like it's not. You're not supposed to see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes it more scary in mm. a way. Um, and what do people?